Hello, in this video I'll be making swords and a sword scabbard for the Deadpool costume I'm making. A template for this can be found in the description of this video. Let's get cracking! Alright, let's make this sword scabbard. And uh, this is a template I've made based on pictures I've found on Google. I've uh, scaled it to the right size and this file can be downloaded. The link to that is in the description of this video. Uh, as your printer is probably different to mine, it might not print out exactly the size, but from the very top down to this recess piece here, on mine is 18 centimeters, which is about seven inches. So I've gone and cut that out, traced it onto foam, and cut out two pieces here. One's going to be the front, one's going to be the back. And then I've cut this piece out in the middle here, and I've cut that out separately on a thinner piece of foam to add a detail piece on top. But we get to that when we come to dressing this up. Let's make the uh, actual functional parts first. So what we're going to use for the actual bits that hold the swords. Speaking of swords, I'm going to make those later and they're going to be made out of this wood here. The little label thing there says it's 6mm thick, 25mm wide and this is 900mm long. And we're going to use this as the scabbard. So I'm going to take that and that will fit in there nicely like this. And another one to go on the other side and they'll crisscross over and it's all nice and flush. And this is just trunking that you tidy up cables with. So you take the cover off, screw this bit into your wall or something, cables will run through there and you've got your little cover on. But this works perfectly well for what we're going to use it for. The size of these. It's here, it's 40mm across, 16mm deep, and I've gone and taken my saw and cut through both of those halfway on both, so that way when they slot over each other, they perfectly line up. Now these are the wrong colour, they need to be black, so that's the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make these black. Now we could paint them, but if they get knocked around, then the paint's going to chip off and it'll be white underneath. So what I've got is this, it's a really wide roll of tape, it's kind of like electrical tape, it's um, about 50mm which is 2 inches wide and this will make these nice and black so we're just going to cover those. Use vinyl wrap, similar stuff you'd use to, you know, wrapping your car in or whatever. But that stuff is way more expensive than the couple of quid I spent on this whole roll. Ooh, that's, that's covered nicely. Just one more piece for the back. these pieces covered now. They go together like this. And wider together, I'm just going to take some of that tape and just stick them down. And then on to the next bit. So using that template, cut these out. These are going to be stuck on now. That one. So these bits here, these corners at the top, they touch this edge here. So maybe we can get that lined up. Pretty much sorted. So it's going to go on there like that. And we need to glue that. Before we do that, I'm going to mark out on here where it's going to go. Just going to use a pencil. 
I don't know where to put my glue. And before we put any glue on this, it doesn't like sticking to the uh, textured side of the foam. So I'm going to take a file, rough that up. Lots of glue. Something like that. And we're going to flip it over. And this bit is going to be put there, but not yet. There's a little bit to do before we can do that. As you can see, there's a big gaping hole in the side there. So I took a piece of this, a spare piece of this, laid it down on a piece of foam, like that, and then cut around it. So we're going to have a piece like this. And we're going to use that to fatten it up. An angle there, so I just need to copy that angle, which is about that. Yep. So I'm going to make that deliberately a bit too long, I'm going to trim it once it's on there. Okay, glue. So this bit needs to be slightly angled to get in there. Now that piece is on there, trim that bit off, following that angle. So the idea is to go the whole way around. Get this piece of on there like that. I'm just going to continue adding that perimeter in. Right, we've skipped forwards. That's because sorting these straps out was a bit of a faff. Basically, what they are. Is a similar sort of setup to what you get on a rucksack, i.e., there's like a little clip here, and it does up with this end by pulling it, it'll go tighter and you can loosen it. it needs sewing at this end, and there's one that goes over each shoulder, like a rucksack, and then there's a big one that goes over one shoulder, similar to like a, a lady's handbag or something, I guess, um, and they're gonna be fed through underneath this piece of foam here. So I'm going to glue it around the edges so that will allow these to still be adjusted like this rather than gluing them down. So that way we can pull it through a bit either up or down to make sure that these buckles are both symmetrical and then they're not somewhere that's uncomfortable. So I'm going to take these pins out and then just glue along these parts here being sure not to glue the straps down and then we're almost finished with the uh, scabbard. I'm going to tuck that right out of the way. So all of that in there, let's put all that edging in. We've even gone and done the edging on the inside here as well just to keep those those uh, plastic things nice and secure. So remember, I don't want to get 
any glue on my strap so I'm going to go right along this edge and probably about an inch in down here glue that seeps out that's fine I'll neaten that up in a little bit so we can't put any glue at the bottom here because all the straps are running through that bit but we can at the very top in fact we need to otherwise they'll cross over check these pins out shoulder pad thing here is actually from a strap from an old bag I had. You can always make one I suppose out of a bit of fabric or go to a charity shop and buy an old bag for next to nothing. Just to take this off you might even have to use the whole strap. It still moves. That one still moves. That one still moves. Cut out this piece here and this goes on like this. So we're just going to glue that on. Now we look back at the original template, there's detailed bits here as well. Basically go straight up there. And all I'm gonna do for that is take a very sharp knife. For the phone, I'm gonna go about a third of the way into the phone. What you're gonna to wanna to do next is get your heat gun and heat those cuts you just made. them up by magic. So this is the last bit of paint to go on here and while this is drying we can get cracking with the swords. We're using for the base of these swords are these strips of wood. They are 6mm thick, 25mm wide and about 900 in length. And we're going to, for the handle of these, use a bit of plastic pipe. And diameter wise that is 25mm. Now, the problem we're going to have is doesn't fit, so we have to cut a section of this to allow it to fit into this. Okay. Now this is with the grain. I'm wondering if I can cut this with a knife. I'm gonna do my horizontal cuts with my saw. Can we just cut into that? Let's find out. Yes, you can. going on there as well. Probably squeeze some foam into there as well to hold that nice and snug. Got an extra one of these left over from doing the scabbard. Thick. 
cut that down a size. Let me get half this thing. Obviously, you could just buy half a stick foam. If you've got some to hand, I don't. Permanently attach this, so I'm going to take a little bit of glue. So it's going to fall out. But before we glue that in, the blade is looking a bit wooden and the handle is looking a little bit like it's a piece of PVC pipe. So let's first of all fix the blade. And we're going to make that nice and shiny and the way we're going to do that is not with paint, but with this aluminium foil tape. I'm just going to peel off a really long piece of this. Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm using a small roll of electrical tape to actually just smooth out the creases and wrinkles in the foil tape I've just put on the blade. Is that bit done? On to the next bit, which is the handle. So we need to put some sort of detailing on this. And what we're going to use is our tape. We're going to wrap it around. It's like a textured grip. So I've stuck this on here like this. And I'm going to go round until I get to as thick as I, I want it. I'm going to make sure I count as I do, so I'm going to repeat that all the way down. So I'm going to get round back to the join there. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ish. I'm using tiny bits of tape here to mark off where each of those rings of tape are going to be just to make sure they end up evenly spaced before I wrap a load around. And then just repeat the process now, you've got your little markers. Here we go, one, two, three, four. now is like a little cross guard thing so we're going to make a six by six centimeter square and then cut a slit right in the middle big enough to fit the blade down and that's going to need to be black and here's some I made earlier so that's six centimeters by six centimeters cut a slit down the middle and we're just going to poke that through like that now that a bit of a problem. So what we're going to do take a little bit more of that foil tape. Then we're going to cut this in half. Put one to one side. Use that for the other sword. It's a cool little feature. And that should stop that from sliding back up. Now you may be wondering why I had such a long length of wood go into the handle there, making the blade shorter. Well, that was for two reasons. One, if you only have it go that far into the handle, it's not going to be very secure, and your blade's probably going to be really loose or wobbly or even fall out completely. And another reason is, if your blade is too long, when you're wearing it in your back, you won't be able to pull it out because your arm isn't long enough. If your blade is longer than your arm is outstretched, you won't be able to pull them out. So that's why I've made the blade shorter. And here it is all finished. So on the back here we've got that big strap that goes over one shoulder. And you've got the two smaller straps that essentially go on like a rucksack. 
swords slide in and out as you'd imagine they would. Just do me a favour, if you're going to make one of these, don't go out in public and start waving these around because yeah, from here they look like bits of wood with foil tape wrapped around them. But from you know 30, 40 feet away to someone that doesn't know who Deadpool is, i.e. you know the general public maybe, they think you're a nutter waving samurai swords around. You're going to have armed police turn up and shoot you dead, and you won't regenerate. So don't do it. These imitation weapons keep them in a bag or whatever until you get to where you're going, i.e. a convention or wherever, and then get them out and have fun with them, not in public, because you're going to get in trouble. So yeah, that being said, this video is done. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel for updates on future projects and check out the social media links in the description of this video. And remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.